dear students today we will continue with web design process what this web design process is it is the exact set of steps followed by the designer to complete one project even though each client is unique and has different needs you will find that you complete the same core of task for each time it means you have to complete the following task before going for the coding of the project so what are the benefits of that standard web design process so if you go for one standard method it saves time having a streamlined process can save your time you will never find yourself stuck wondering which part of the project to tackle next okay that is the first concept it saves your time okay manually if you make one structure or maybe algorithm of website then it's better to develop okay that is one concept it saves time second one it builds trust with clients having a reliable process in place also helps give your client some peace of mind they can rest assured that their project is getting the same level of attention and scrutiny that you provide to all of your clients okay to increase or to build trust with the clients that is second one ensures nothing is left out this is most important when you your web designing process is completed again to include some parts if you don't have any design of that website then it's very difficult to include the part that's why it is in the beginning we have to prepare one model of a website manually and afterwards you have to go for the development that is ensures nothing is left out finally having a clearly outlined web design process in place helps you make sure that nothing is forgotten okay now we will see web design process what is the basic web design process includes first one is discovery first you will work with your client to learn everything you need to know about their business this is when you will ask questions such as what is their mission what do they sell who is their target audience okay that is the first concept discovery we will try to discover what is needed by that client and for what purpose he is developing that website or he is creating that website knowing that concept is important whether it's for educational purpose whether it's a business purpose for online selling for which type of purpose whether it's a school site to collect fees everything you should know in the beginning that is called discovery discovery is a first step in the web designing process second one is planning once you have a clear idea of what the client is looking for you can move on to the planning stage okay once the discovery is over the requirement phase is over from the client side then you can go for the planning stage this stage is at the heart of the entire web design process you will refer back to this part throughout the entire project as designer we are inclined to want to jump right into the design phase remember that the planning phase is what builds the framework for the rest of the project first this is the part of the process where you will create the site map think of the site map as the website's blueprint it outlines the website structure and indicates the home for each page on the site it shows how each page leads to the next okay for example we can see how the site map looks like so there may be like first page my page again the my page is split into about me contact me my portfolio my links again the about me contains image or profile and here contact from email 
postal address, drawings, paintings, photos, my links, company, university related. So we have to find out exact site map in this type of format. Okay, you have to design a prototype of the site in this type of format. Maybe for example, if you are developing one site related to bank or maybe one educational institute. In educational institute, what are the requirements that you have to find out and whether you are developing static or dynamic website. And you have to clear up those things on that basis. On the basis of discoveries, you will, you will develop one website structure and that we will call it as a site map. And third one is design. This step is where you create the visual design and layout of the website. Okay, so the discovery is over, planning is over, the next step is designing by taking different type of methods. Maybe first we will create, we will design the layouts and afterwards we will plan for the coding. All those things will come under design process. Which language to take? If there is a dynamic website, you need front end tool as well as back end tool. All those things you have to plan in the design part. Maybe the client's color choice. If there is a logo, how the design of the logo must be. Website content and branding will lead you during this stage. This part of the process is where you consider all of the user interface design elements such as icons, buttons, spacing and flow of a website or a program. Fourth one is development. The website development phase is where you take the front end design you have created and you turn it into a functional website. Okay. So whatever the front end layouts are ready in the designing phase that we will try to implement through programming method that we will call it as a development. The development process might be done by you as the designer, another member of your team or a separate web developer, the client hires. Okay, the development process, maybe in the bigger company, there may be separate persons for the discoveries, persons for the planning, separate persons for the designing purpose and separate person for the development. Every step of process, there will be many number of people. If there is a bigger website development, maybe for the banking, if you are developing one website or maybe for the one organization, if you are developing one website, which is with hundreds of branches, then you must have these type of concepts in a clear way. During the development phase, you will create the proper HTML or CSS code for each page you have designed. This part includes both front-end development and back-end development of the site. Okay, the front-end development means maybe the layout designs, what you have planned, that may be a front-end. For that, maybe you will use HTML or CSS or maybe the Adobe Illustrator or Dreamweaver, many number of softwares are there for the designing purpose. After the designing, okay, you will plan for the backend and to interact with the backend you need languages, maybe the PHP, maybe Python, all these languages we can take to develop even Java to develop the backend and the backend coding along with it you need some database management software, maybe the SQL server or maybe the MySQL, okay. Next is testing. You have completed the design and development of your client's website. Now it's time for the testing phase. During this phase, you will go through the entire site and make sure everything is working exactly how you planned. This phase we'll call it as a testing. So whatever the planning is there and afterwards maybe we went to development and after the development you have to tally with the planning phase that is called testing. 
First, you want to test the functionality of everything. Are there any coding errors or broken links? Is there anything that's not working as it should? Make sure the site works properly on desktop, tablet and mobile. Okay, generally this type of concept we will call it as a responsive site. Responsive site means checking with working the website. If the website works with all type of devices, all type of devices in the sense maybe we are using desktops, we are using laptops, we are using tablets, we are using mobile. If your website is works with all these type of devices, then we will call it as a responsive website. And that responsive website you have to develop. That means when you are developing a new website, you must develop one responsive website. Nowadays, that is important since the mobile users are more. Next one is launch. Once you have finished testing the website, it's time for the grand finale, that is the launch phase. When you get to this step in the design process, you can get the site up and running on the client's server. Okay. Once the designing is over, okay, development, everything is over, testing is over, then you can purchase a domain name. Then you can purchase a space on the web server and then you can launch that website. That is the sixth process. Seventh one is maintenance. The web design process doesn't end when you launch the website and hand the project back to the client. Sites are ever evolving the entities that will require continued tweaking and maintenance. That means there will be a maintenance process. Commonly the people will call it as a AMC. AMC means annual maintenance cost or an annual maintenance service. Okay. And AMC is comes AMC will come under maintenance space. In this maintenance space, maybe First, when you are developing one website, maybe you will give time, maybe one month. Within the one month, they have to say the new changes. After one month, it goes to the maintenance phase. That means if you are making any changes in the website, then the client has to repay the amount. Okay, whatever amount is paid for the web development, that is different. The maintenance phase is different. And in this maintenance phase is very much important. Okay. And in this maintenance phase, again, if the client says any changes and that we will perform, that means the developer will perform and on that basis, we will charge maintenance charges that, we will, that is called as AMC. Next is basic web process model. There are various phases involved in website development, just like any other software. The process model must help the developers in the following ways. To address the complexity of the site, to minimize the risk of project failure, to deal the near certainty of change, to deliver the site quick. It's a basic web process model is nothing but basic web process needs. Okay, the needs are first, you have to address the complexity of the site. You have to know the complexity on that basis, you have to start developing. Risk of project failure. There should not be any risk of project failure that you have to find out in the beginning to deal the near certainty of change. Okay, if any changes comes in the website, it must be possible to change. The site must be developed in that way. It must be like template. To deliver the site quickly, try to develop the site quickly. Otherwise, the user requirements will change. Again, you have to take the planning. So, it wastes time. And the time is important in web development. So, deliver the site quickly. And the waterfall model is the most common model adopted in software engineering. This model describes the phases 
in the lifetime of the software. The most web developer adopt the waterfall model for site development. The waterfall approach makes the developer plan everything, but it requires vast experience. You know more about waterfall model. Maybe you have learned in the SAD and in the waterfall model, commonly the waterfall model we will use that even it is called as top to bottom type of approach. And here we can see the waterfall model. First there is a requirement analysis, then the system design, then the program design, coding, testing, and then operation and maintenance. And you can see if the in the testing phase, again, sometime we have to go back for the system design and for the requirement analysis. Okay. And on that basis, we will develop. And while developing this requirement system and program design, even we will check the prototypes. So what type of methods we can take, all those methods we will check at the time of requirements, analysis, system design and program design. Then we will go for the coding, testing, in testing phase. Again, if there are any changes are required, again we will go back to requirement and system design. We will make those changes if it is not up to the system design or requirement analysis. In testing, we will try to find out and then we will go for the operation and maintenance phase. Okay. So, commonly we will use this waterfall model in the website development. Thank you students. In the next class, we will see different site types. Thank you. God bless you.